So hello and welcome to another video by Adrian David from Pure Electric. In this video, I'm going to be talking around the what appears to be the death of the domestic installer course, okay? And has the electrical industry finally turned its back on the controversial domestic installer route? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly show the EAS specification. I'm going to talk through the qualifications that they now recognize and show you what this now means for people in the industry and for people looking to join the industry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how Select in Scotland is dealing with the issue and how you have to have 10 years of uh, experience as an electrician if you have no formal qualifications and I'll talk you through the AM2E route in England where you only need five years of experience and no formal qualifications so we'll talk about briefly why that why that is and my opinions on that first let's have a look at the EAS specification so for those of you that don't know if you look at electrical.viet.org or type in EAS specification it will have the, the document there ready for you to look at so if we just click on this briefly so this came in to uh, this was effective from the 1st of September 2020 okay so this had been in for a little while Ministries of Communities and Government, who I suspect are the ones that are pushing this, if I'm honest with you. So all you really need to know for the moment is that the EAS specification is what the competent person schemes have to work to. That is the agreement. Um, and we go down, we've got Appendix 4A. This is valid until 31st of August this year. And then we move on to Appendix 4B. Now, at the moment, the um, industry approved routes are either the um, apprenticeship or the diploma and two years of responsibility before you can enroll with a competent person scheme. Now apparently this has been in for quite a while but the schemes haven't enforced it, they've just taken anybody off. Then you've got the alternative, alternative routes. Again if you look at this, all of these routes you need two years of experience unless you've been a previous qualified supervisor. So what that suggests to me is that they're not looking to clean up their existing membership so those of you that are already on the system as domestic installers, you're safe for now. Uh, and if you're looking to change from one scheme to another, again, it doesn't cause you any issue. Um, and then we go down to table 4B. So this is going to be what's going to happen from September onwards. So these are going to be the free routes that industry approved routes. You've got the, um, the apprenticeship standard, you've got the diploma standard, and then you've got also the Scottish vocational qualification. And they're also then going to have the AM2E assessment, which is going to be supposedly the equivalent of this. But I'll talk about that later because it really isn't when you actually look into it. It's just another backdoor entry for domestic installers or people that are lesser qualified to be rubber stamped with the apprenticeship standard. Um, so it kind of makes a mockery a bit of it all. But again, as you go down, you'll see obviously even with the alternative routes, you still need two years experience uh, unless you were a previous qualified supervisor. And this is if you want to be able to do periodic electrical inspection and testing. So again, before anybody could join, you could be st stacking shelves one minute, do a five day course and then go out and do electrical inspection and testing um, in people's homes and for landlord certificates. Whereas now you have to have two years of experience before you can, you can do that. So this is now the EAS qualifications guide. So I suggest that anybody looking to join the industry has a look at this. And obviously for those of you that are already in it, although if you're already in it, you are safe, which I'll continue to explain. So first thing you'll notice is this came into effect on December, 2020. So if we scroll down to page four, it gives you an overview. OK, so it basically tells you that this guide has been developed under the direction of the EAS Management Committee, which is all those companies that I spoke about before, to provide supporting information to Appendix 4B of the electro of the EAS specification, which is valid from the 1st of September 21. So this is coming into play this year. So 4A is the old list, 4B is the new list. So this is the overview of the applicable minimum technical competence required by work category. So whether you're in dwellings or other dwellings, temporary supplies, um, defined scope. Again, like we had defined scope back in 2005, where if you were just a kitchen fitter or boiler engineer and you just wanted to be able to connect to an appliance, you could join through a defined scope. But that was all you could do. You could literally just move a socket or connect something up. You couldn't change consumer units or do full rewires. 
Um, Periodic inspection, again, it talks about in dwellings or other dwellings, but effectively you need an inspection and testing qualification. And then it goes now to say 4B, underpinning core technical competence limited to dwellings only. So this is what they're going to be looking for. They're going to be looking for a level three certificate in installing testing and ensuring compliance of electrical installation dwellings. Uh, City and Guilds used to have a course called 2397, which was that, but it never stood a chance because the uh, common and person schemes and other unscrupulous training providers came up with um, fast track courses and just shortened them, kept shortening them, bums on seats, that kind of thing. So I'm hoping that the 2397 will come back again because that was aimed purely at domestic installers and, and domestic environment. You've got industry apprenticeship and recognised historical industry qualifications. And then you obviously you've got the AM2E route, which is via recognition of prior S experience and learning. Now, this is the first time that I've really seen this with RPEL in it. All the ones that I've seen before were just RPL. It was recognition of prior learning. So you had to go to college. You had to have um, underpinning knowledge. You had to have um, experience um, and been taught the science and principles about behind everything we do. Whereas now they've changed it. They've inserted this experience part, okay? This part here, that was never there before. And what they're saying is now that it doesn't matter what learning you have done at college. Doesn't matter if you understand the theory and principles behind it. Doesn't, under, doesn't matter whether you understand the uh, resistors and series and parallel and Ohm's law and you know power triangles. It's all about whether you can put it on the wall or not. Now the AM2E, uh, assessment is exactly the same as the AM2S. They haven't altered anything, they haven't made it any more difficult, you just need five years of experience. You build a portfolio to say that you can do something which you can buy for about £1,700 and somebody will fill it out for you uh, and then you're going for the AM2E. Now that is an, apprent that is a, an apprentice level, it's very simple. All the containment is there apart from a bit of 20 mil um, conduit, metal and plastic, which is very simple to install. It's not, it's not much, it's not, it's not impossible. Uh, if you've got experience in the industry, it should be a doddle. And then you just need to wire up the installation and test it and then do some fault finding, which you guys should be able to do anyway. So don't be scared of it. As far as I'm concerned, this is a back door into the industry for the domestic installers and for the industry to clean up its mess. So. I suggest you jump on this with both hands and get it done before the industry realizes what's going on and closes up this backdoor route into the industry. So um, again, yeah, this is just the industry mopping up its mess effectively and then rubber stamping everyone with equivalent of a, an apprenticeship to, to hide their failings and mistakes. But for you domestic installers out there and, and people that you know, like me, who don't have the qualifications uh, because your training provider let you down. Um, it's great. You know, jump on it, get it done. We all get gold cards. Fantastic. We can all pay for the, um, for the gold card standard now. And effectively, I won't go through all this, but if you guys take a look, read through, it tells you all the qualifications that they accept. They, it tells you what they don't accept. OK, so this is NAPIT's guide to electrical requirements. So it's worth having a look through. Again, with the NAPIT guide, they kind of do talk through it and get, you know, line things up a bit easier. They make it a bit more user friendly. But the thing that I really want to draw your attention to on this sheet is right at the bottom. OK, so list 12 qualifications that would need additional auditable evidence. So the following qualifications need some or include some underlying knowledge or entry level content but are not sufficient to be considered equivalent to the requirements for registration. They can be used provided you can demonstrate two years experience and together with additional auditable evidence, which can be achieved by undergoing an assessment for certification under list 6A, which would include inspection and testing and completing a wiring regulations qualification, so effectively 18th edition, um, you can then register with a competent body website. If you search for that qualification, it doesn't come up. Um, but you can see here that these qualifications here are not accepted by the competent person schemes for enrollment. You have to do more, you have to do extra. 
uh, your best chances are to fill out an MVQ and do the AM2E. And like I said, that's not going to be difficult. The NIC have their entry requirements as well, which they've put down. And again, they talk about the EAS specification. They tell you all those tables that we've already spoken about. So I won't go through all of this uh, again. But interestingly, I want you to have a look at the Scottish um, journey to become an electrician. So for the Scottish route, if you've got no formal qualifications, you must have at least 10 years experience as a practicing electrician or with relevant qualifications like the 2365 or the 8202 or the 2360, you must have at least three years experience as a practicing electrician. Then you apply to SECT. Okay. Once you've been approved, you then have regular contact with an assessor. You need to then apply to sit the Basically, the FICA, which is exactly the same as the AM2S, you need the 18th edition and you need the Scottish Building Standards course within the last three years. I also have a feeling somewhere you need to have the 2391 qualification, but I can't quite see it here at the moment. And then once you've completed that, you're an electrician. OK, now I'm happy with that for a domestic installer, 10 years experience. You know, I did three years at college and I would say 10 years later, you start to really understand your trade. So for me, I'm happy with that. Now, let's have a look at the test version. So this is uh, the electrical. So this is experienced worker assessment. If you need to get your skills and experience recognised to the Industry Level 3 benchmark, the new Electrotechnical Experienced Worker Assessment can help. It's the new assessment route for people who have been working as an electrician for typically over five years. The main benefit is that your existing qualifications, skills and experience can count towards the assessment, so you'll only need to fill in any gaps. The new Experienced Worker Assessment is based on the same content as the electrotechnical apprenticeship. So now both new entrants and existing workers are being assessed and accredited to the same industry standard. How does it work? Before you can sign up, you need to undertake a skills scan to look at if the assessment is right for you. You'll need to have knowledge and understanding which is equivalent to the level three electrotechnical apprenticeship. To complete the whole assessment, first you'll need to gain the experienced work qualification, which comprises three elements. If you've already completed some of these, you won't need to repeat them, making for a shorter overall assessment process. You'll also need to take the AM2E assessment, which mirrors the AM2S assessment taken by electrotechnical apprentices. Once you've passed the AM2E, your experienced worker process is complete. Achievements of the experienced worker qualification and the AM2E meets the criteria for an ECS Gold Card application and it's also recognized by the electrotechnical assessment specification as equivalent to the industry apprenticeship. On the TESP website, you can read full details about the experienced worker assessment, frequently asked questions, and how to start the process. Visit www.the-esp.org.uk forward slash EWA to find out more. Okay, I'm going to briefly talk through the experienced worker assessment just so that you guys can, you know, looking to join a competent person scheme, can see what's required really. Five years experience uh, and effectively all you do is you just say, I mean, look, understanding my results, I've ticked adequate at all or nearly all the, so safe isolation and risk assessment. And this is exactly the same as the AM2 um, assessment as well. You know, the candidate assessment, it's exactly the same. So can you carry out a risk assessment? Do you have knowledge and experience? Um, installation, can you install these things? adequately or with limited or unsure and effectively then what happens is that as you work your way down anything that would come up as limited um, or unsure they the, the training provider will sell you a course to fill in the gaps and some training and and that's it you just literally go down and all of this is what is in the am2e same as the am2s so if you can't, basically what they're saying is if you can't do any of this, you won't pass the exam. Now for the AM2E, I can't see that as legitimate, if I'm honest with you, because if you haven't had the knowledge of understanding of being at college for three, two, three years, you don't have the underpinning knowledge, the basic principles, 
And all you've been, all you've done is a three week domestic installer course, and then you're going on to do this. It's not the same as the apprenticeship standard. How can it be? So, you know, questions are going to be asked. I'm going to do a video on that, but I just wanted you guys to see while you are a domestic installer, jump on this while you can before they make it harder, because at the moment it's easy. I mean, literally, if a three year apprentice can do this, so can you. Well, you so you should be able to. And if you can't pass this exam, then that shows you the lack of training that you've actually had. And that's only the installation side, not the theory side. So in summary, is this the end of the domestic installer course? Well, yes and no. I'm sure the courses will still exist. However, they are not a viable option for anybody looking to join the industry. What's the point in doing three weeks of training and then having to gain two years of experience when you can be at college for two years, go down the diploma route and then get experience with an electrical company and build up your MVQ and your portfolio. Or even better still, get an apprenticeship and everything's paid for you. And in three, year, three to four years time, you'll be fully qualified. You would have done everything. So I can't see the domestic installer course being a viable option anymore. However, watch this space because knowing this industry, it won't be very long before the competent person schemes have their own training that comes out that will be used to bridge the gaps. So the only problem is with doing training that's been sorted out by a competent person scheme is I don't think that training's registered with Ofqual. I think it's just their own training for their scheme. And then if you try and use that qualification anywhere else, nobody's gonna recognize it. If you look at this city and guilds one that I've got here, for instance, so it's, it's this, this qualification is registered with Ofqual. It means something. So if you look at this qualification, for instance, so this is an NIC solar PV course, it's not off qual registered. There's nothing on there to say that it's a legitimate course. It's an NIC EIC accredited course. So it works for them. It may not work for anyone else. And it's the same with all these other courses that NAPIT or NIC or whoever wants to sell you. Unless it's on the off qual website, it doesn't hold the same level of validity. So just bear that in mind as well. And in short, if you don't want to continuously keep paying for training and keep paying to prove yourself and prove that you know what you're doing or understand it, same with anything, you know, buy crap, buy twice. You know, if you, if you do the right route and pay the right amount of money or do it the right way, your training will be valid throughout your career. And all you'll do is keep building on top of that rather than having to keep it afloat okay so that's where you want to be you want to be building onto your qualification not just keeping your qualification afloat and not being able to progress in the same way so just some thoughts for you there but as i see it this is the start of the death of the domestic installer room so you've been warned take care